Meta Modern Era by Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi. Read by Sukhanil. Chapter 10 The Message of Meta Science. Science cannot answer many questions. So many in medical science have now tried to reach the minutest thing called the gene. But the scientists are frustrated because they cannot go any further with the help of these genes to really overcome the complications created by modern life. The conclusion they have reached, that genes are only inherited, is absolutely wrong. Actually, genes also reflect our personality that we create in day-to-day -day life. All our sympathetic activity is reflected on our genes as well. It cannot be explained in the science of medicine why acetylcholine or adrenaline, two chemicals, act in a very different manner in the body when they are a fixed chemical formula. Also, it cannot be explained why a child, which comes as a fetus in the womb of the mother, is not thrown out by the body as other foreign materials are rejected and thrown out according to the nature of the body. But this fetus is preserved until it grows up to a point and then, when it is ready, it is thrown out. The labour pains start, and the little child is born in this new world, out of the womb of the mother. Who is responsible for this timing? There are many other cultural questions which cannot be answered through science. As science deals with only matter, or the human body, it cannot solve the problems of modern times. It cannot discover the subtler, or wider problems of life. For example, what is the purpose of evolution and the meaning of human life? What is the solution for getting out of this mess of modern life, which is very confusing and full of violence? What is the way we can achieve global peace? All these questions should be asked, but science has no answer for these questions, which are extremely important. Now we have to know that the answer lies within ourselves and not outside in the world. Sometimes scientists also reach very wrong conclusions. For example, in the biological deduction, it is presumed that our genes are only genetic and inherent, and they determine our character. Firstly, genes are not only inherent, because sons of the same parents could be in juxtaposition in their characters and behaviour. Many parents who are very good and very honest people, get children who are monsters. Parents who are drunkards have children who hate drinking, etc. Let us see how the genes are placed in our cells. When the ova and sperm meet, they form a zygote. The cells pass through four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. There are 46 chromosomes in the human cell, these chromosomes, which are 46 in total in every cell, have two types of chromosomes. Autosomes are 44, and for sex, there are two determinants, X and Y. 2X is a female, while XY is a male. From ova and sperm, we get 22 chromosomes each, which come through diploid-haploid division into cellular division. They join in the shape of a spindle where they meet. They grow into a zygote, which starts the cell formation. These chromosomes contain millions of genes, which have DNA in billions. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, which is life's code. The DNA has a unit basis of three, nitrogen, sugar, and phosphates. There are four types of nitrogen, thiamine, adenine, guanine, and cytosine. The genes are like spiral threads which overlap each other, forming loops. Always guanine faces cytosine, or adenine faces thiamine. To begin with, we have sugar for nourishment in the chromosomes. Carbohydrates like sugar are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The carbon is from the Mother Earth, hydrogen and oxygen from water. Evolution has passed through the first phase, of hydrogen plus oxygen equals H2O water plus carbon equals carbohydrates. Then nitrogen joined to form amino acid, which brought in life in the carbohydrates. The DNA has a unit base of nitrogen, sugar and phosphates, 
So when their series change position, the cell denotes the change in the character of a person. To reach a conclusion that these genes are inherent is very dangerous because that means anybody can get away with any unholy, cruel or criminal lifestyle. This is an escape and suits people who are at the helm of affairs of religion and are teaching a sinful life, which is not according to the scriptures. This false scientific conclusion can cancel all religious or federal laws. The great victory of science over religions and pure morality may be announced by scientists, but reality is very different. Actually, the database is made of phosphate, nitrogen and carbohydrates. When the water in the cell dries due to right-sided action, the phosphate becomes volatile and a person becomes violent. When a person is very docile, the carbohydrates make the person lethargic and submissive. Right-sidedness in its extreme becomes sadistic and left-sidedness becomes masochistic. Nitrogen gives the balance, and when the inner energy of evolution emits nitrogen to the cell, it achieves a new shape of an evolved self to be explained later. There is another way of understanding this problem. Every cell has a receptor which looks after the internal atmosphere of a cell. To go a little subtler, one can find out that there is a very perfect mechanism placed along the spinal cord like a remote control which has seven loops, which is known as the soul in the scriptures. The soul is responsible for looking after our well-being and innocence. It protects the righteousness and goodness within the human mind. It saves us from our destruction. This controls the inner atmosphere of the cell through the control of the receptor. When this soul is challenged by the wrong deeds of a person, it acts on the receptor of the cell, which ultimately disturbs the inner atmosphere of the cell, which changes the series of the database units of the cell in the DNA. Thus, from the genes, one can know the character of the person which is very much acquired. Even the chromosomes, which are called autosomes, which are for physical aspect, can change, like Kobe steaks or broiler chicken. Even in human beings it goes into shapes of body, which can be acquired by physical, emotional or mental activity. These genes could be partly inherent and could not be in proper series before birth, according to the nature of the mother and father. Because of our day-to-day -day life, especially in modern times, it will disturb the inner atmosphere of the cell. Thus disturbances change the series of databases, indicating the total character which is genetic and inherent or acquired by the person. If the people in charge of the religions had practiced from the understanding of how important it was to make one wise, balanced and compassionate for the last breakthrough of our evolution by manifesting spirit-oriented religions, even the wrongdoers would have become good, normal people and deep seekers of absolute truth. But the people at the helm of affairs of religion are themselves money or power-oriented and not spirit-oriented. They can poison the ignorant minds of the simple faithful and mislead them into hell. The evolution to the human level has taken very little time if we consider the law of chance. Evolution can be compared with the construction of a spacecraft capsule, which has multi-stage, with many inner layered capsules built into it. At launching, the capsule, with all the others inside it, leaves the Earth with speed and, when an explosion takes place in the outermost capsule after some time, it throws the spacecraft with a much greater speed, discarding the extra burnt part. In the same way, our evolution to human level has taken place. First the physical stage, then the mental stage, then the emotional stage, then the spiritual stage leading to human awareness. This has now exploded in the modern times and spiritual seeking has started. All this development takes place inside the central nervous system, expanding our awareness. The sixth achievement of selfhood is achieved through Sahaja Yoga when we are aware of self, Atma. We achieve self-knowledge through the Kundalini. Now the journey starts toward God-knowledge. Without self-knowledge one cannot know about God as actualized knowledge. 
The truth is there in a dormant residual power in the triangular sacrum bone. This power is called the Kundalini. She is a dormant inner energy for our evolution. She has the power to bring forth a complete nourishment and adjustment of the disturbed genes, whether they are genetic, inherent, or acquired. When she is awakened, she changes the series of genes. Not only does she correct the gene's database, but she breaks through the fontanelle bone area and connects the seeker to the all-pervading power of divine love. She is also called the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost, the Ru, Retambara, or Param Chaitanya. Thus, by this second birth, one becomes a realized person as actualization of baptism takes place. The light of the Spirit, which is the reflection of God Almighty in our hearts, enters into our attention and enlightens it. The seeker is really born again, not just on a paper certificate, but he changes as the transformation takes place within. There is a vast difference between an ordinary seeker and a realized soul, yogi. He becomes his own master, full of divine love. It is a resurrection process, like an egg becoming a bird. Maybe this is the reason eggs are presented as an Easter symbol, reminding us that one has to get resurrected. The genes change, and complete transformation takes place. For some people, it takes time if they are sick or egotistical. Also, some of them who feel guilty or cannot forgive others are rather difficult to perfect their state of self-realization. If they have a problem from false gurus, cults, or fanaticism, it also takes time, but can be established in Saj Yoga. People have given up even drugs overnight. They never had withdrawal symptoms or any other trouble. Self-realization as a result of Kundalini awakening has exhibited fantastic results. It brings forth new creativity. Many people have become poets. Musicians and artists have achieved great heights in their talents. Financial problems are solved. The problems of psychosomatic diseases get cured, like cancer, myelitis, etc. Many incurable diseases also get cured without any medicines. The seeker becomes the witness of the drama of life as inner peace is established. He respects all the religions and belongs to the innate universal religion which encompasses all the religions of the world. Morality becomes innate and spontaneous. After the complete transformation, he is averse to do any immoral acts. In the light of the Spirit, he knows exactly what is wrong or right, and he is also in power to stay clean and holy as he discards all that is destructive. He enjoys his virtues, which he respects, and without any doubt, he becomes a moral human being. First, Thoughtless awareness is achieved, and later, doubtless awareness is established beyond the mind. At this stage, the Saj Yogi can give self-realization to others. The aging does not take place. On the contrary, the Saj Yogi becomes and looks at least twenty years younger than his age. They become universal beings. All human enemies of lust, greed, anger, possessiveness, Jealousies, attachments just disappear. Thus a new race of saints are created who do not have to give up anything to show off their detachment or asceticism. You cannot pay for divine love, which is absolute truth, which the Saj Yogi feels on his fingertips as vibrations of the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. The fingertips are related to the energy centers, the chakras, the chakras are responsible for our physical, emotional, and mental being. If the yogis can correct their chakras, they can also correct the chakras of others. Thus, all the physical, emotional, and mental problems are solved. Those who are pure people have the necessary balance of moral life, which ensures a widening central channel of ascent, the Sushumna Nadi of the Kundalini. In this chapter, we have to now understand that there is a subtle system in every human being, 
which is fully developed during this evolutionary process to reach up to human awareness. For example, in the animals there is no awareness of sin, dirt, filth, art or poetry. But among human beings, these sensitivities are manifesting very clearly, as we appreciate and enjoy the birds, fishes and animals as well. Do they also see the beauty in us? This question can be answered this way. Human beings are at a higher level of evolution than all the animals for whom we care so much. We love the birds and we enjoy the fish dancing. But the best thing is really to have respect for ourselves, love ourselves. We should keep our body clean. Our mind and our heart should be open and transparent. Because we are the highest evolved beings in the world, it is our birthright to get our self-realization. Instead, thanks to writers like Sigmund Freud and the Marquis de Sade, we have reduced the human being into a sex point, even worse than beasts. It is such a contagious, demeaning disease that if a cell of perverted sex is introduced into any animal, they also become perverted. Now this disease has contaminated societies in the West. By the end of this century, we may have statues raised in memory of these new moralists who have shown the way to our adored destruction. Now whatever I'm going to tell you has not to be accepted blindfolded, but treated like a hypothesis. Again and again, I would request that you keep your mind open like a scientist. If whatever I'm saying is proved, then, as honest people, human beings have to accept this beautiful discovery about yourself, because this is for your benevolence, and for the benevolence of your family, benevolence of your society, benevolence of your nations, and benevolence of the whole world. The theories created by current scientific conclusions and also the mental projections are not by any means eternal truths. To know the reality, one has to enter into the realm of meta-science, beyond mind, which is only possible when we enter into the collective superconsciousness through self-realization. Mind is an illusion, and the brain is the truth. The divine energy flows through the brain to begin with when the fetus is formed. The human brain is like a prism with an apex, while the animal brain is flatter in shape. The divine energy goes into refraction due to the double layer of the brain and goes out as energy. The resultant energy is absorbed in the nervous system and the remaining energy flows out of the brain. This outflowing energy is the one that reacts to everything, creating the balloons of ego and superego conditioning. The ego and the superego cover the limbic area and create bubbles of thoughts in the mind, which control us, keeping reality beyond the mind. <laughs>